Mega Jimmy. I was in Serial Killers and Double Penetration. Uh, okay, so Serial Killers was from, you just told me, but... Serial Killers was from about 86 to 90, with an occasional reunion game. Okay, so you you're got the serial killers going. It's 1986. What's going around? What's going on around the PA hardcore scene? And the hardcore scene '86 was you know the wide eye it scene was kind of uh, going tepid at the time. So the serial killers. Uh, we had wide eye. We had a. I'm thinking a trilogy of terror. What else did we have? Buddhist delight and an all girl band from the Contra Hocken. What else was there? FOD, we still, well, we still have FOD. <laughs> <laughs> All right, sweet. So what's the origin of uh, Serial Killers? Uh, Tim Omen from Condemned to Death. There's a big band on the, on the West Coast. Met Paul Bear when Paul Bear was out roading for Ruin in San Francisco. And he, I guess he wanted a change of pace. And he came to Philly with Paul and they started the Serial Killers. And they did a lot of Condemned to Death covers at the first couple gigs. It was heavy, heavy on old Condemn to Death. Uh, well, the first gig was at the Kennel Club opening for Sam Ain. They played Pulsations, they played Revival, we played Kyber numerous times, uh, Dobbs, every club in the city. Uh, went to New York many times, Baltimore, D.C., two, two nationwide tours, two 45 city tours. At the time, yeah, at everybody the time. was getting, the Dead Milkman were getting the big push. Yeah, they were they were becoming the stars, videos, MTV, yeah, you know, interviews everywhere. Uh, uh, double penetration was uh, when Tim and Paul had their falling out. Tim started double penetration, and he uh, started to, he started as a three piece with him, Rich Poor, and some other jerk off. But uh, eventually, he asked me to be the singer, and then Tim left after a while, and Rich left, and I brought in Eric Perfect as a guitarist. I mean, a drummer. And we had numerous guitarists until we settled with like uh, Danny Kreskoff and uh, as the steady guitarist and Eric on drums and me. It was like, became the main core of the band. And you guys were well behaved, I heard. No, we <laughs> fucked shit up. We got, we got banned from clubs everywhere we played because usually something get broken or Eric put me through a table or you know, we do some ECW shit and uh, bodily fluids, blood, urine, whatever flying around. Any when uh, we played with the, we played we played with the, had the chick singer, but we played a show at the at, uh, upstairs at Nick's and uh, it was they got rode up everywhere because like it was a really rock rollicking show and then we had like ten Eric broke like ten bottles over my head and then he put me through a burning table and uh, the club kind of caught a little bit of fire but we got we put it out after few minutes but no, nobody really got hurt except me <laughs> I was just like a, a jerk off working college radio in New Jersey I thought you know I was getting laid with Adam and the Ant records but uh, you know I found out that there was something going better going on in Philly and there was actual real bands playing and so I didn't have to go up to New York and think go up to New York to see Patti Smith every time I found out that Philly actually had something going on as about 83, 84. Yeah, Boston had a sound. Philly really didn't quite have a sound. Like every band was trying to be different. I mean, yeah, but you know, every band was like the top of the music. Like Ruin was probably the best band in Philly, and it went down there. But no, like you couldn't listen to a band and go, "Oh, they're from Philly," because everybody sounded different. I mean, the Serial Killers basically, because of Tim, sounded like West Coast. You know, sounded like an Under Death. Uh -huh. Yeah, West Coast band. I'm, I have in my will that when I get, when I die, I'm going to be cremated and my ashes are going to be scattered at the, the right down from the corner of Broad and South where Love Hall used to be. And it's that's stipulated in my will because Love Hall for me was the pinnacle of Philly. Tell us about Love Hall. Love Hall was a little dirty place, didn't even have bathrooms, they already pissed in the alley behind it. I saw the Minutemen, I saw Husker Du, I saw the Circle Jerks there, I saw every great band there. One of my first, the first, I think the first gig I walked into was Minutemen and Husker Du with FOD playing, and it was just, it was just raw. It was the best, the best there is. Would come out after like all night long, be five o'clock in the morning. Every kid would be half naked because it was so hot in there. Steam be rising up. Your glasses would all fog up. It'd be 20 degree weather. Be all standing out there with no shirts on. 
Was uh, the Love Hall, was that the, was that 13 to Chestnut? Or no, or Love Hall was on facing Broad Street. If you go to Broad and South and you just walk back like 40 feet, it's not there anymore. So that's that's what Howard Saunders and Steve I ran, right? Uh, I think Howard Sanders had something to do with it. Yeah. I, I know uh, Lee, Lee Parrish used to run Love Club. That's what I'm thinking. Okay. He had nothing to do with Love Hall because he was, by that time, when he had a show going on, he would go on to his radio show and say that all the other shows that are on the same night were canceled. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sweet. Uh, anything else you'd like to add? Uh, Philly rules.